My name is indeed Dr. Dave Falling, and I am here representing uh, Fluence. Um, I am the principal scientist there. I have the luxury of doing a whole lot of cannabis research and strawberry and tomato and everything else alongside my team. So if you haven't heard of Fluence, uh, we're going to start it off. Fluence is a horticultural science company that also sells lights. And as the head of science, I love that. So that's what I say Fluence is. But really, we're a horticultural lighting company, but we do an awful lot of science. And that's what I can tell you, though. So um, guys, please, next slide. Thank you. So uh, very quickly, why do we even study cannabis photobiology? Well, uh, first of all, is to enable pharmaceutical research. We're here talking about compounds. Why do we even care about those compounds? Well, because ultimately we're trying to help people, right? Yes, our business mostly sells lights, but it's for a reason. We're trying to make the world a better place, and that's by enabling phytopharmaceutical research. Of course, commercially, day to day, we're trying to maximize grower success. And then finally, okay, if we want to discover and exploit the unique physiological characteristics of cannabis, uh, what I'm going to tell you today will probably leave you with the conclusion that cannabis has some pretty unique properties of how it interacts with light that other plants don't have. So there's a lot we can learn. Uh, but today, we are going to mostly focus on maximizing grower success. So what does that mean in cannabis? Uh, well, before we get into that, first of all, how do we, how do, we do it, right? There's, there's a lot of anecdotal information in the world about how you do cannabis research. Um, I want to tell you about our facilities. So we have internal research. Uh, most of that occurs at Texas Original Compassion Cultivation, right down the road from Fluence Headquarters. And we have external research, um, and that's with uh, mostly European partners. So um, I would say the respective strengths, of course, being right down the road from Headquarters, it's great that we have this uh, exclusive research partnership with Texas Original. We can be hands-on with all of our studies. We can be very reactive and implement whatever we want. And we have incredible HVAC and electrical capacity to do the cannabis research uh, that we need to do. And that's really important because cannabis is a very light, hungry crop. If you can't give it sufficient light to really maximize its productivity, then your research is only questionably relevant for the commercial space. Now, uh, in contrast with our European research partners, we benefit from the insights that come from all of the ex other experts that we work with. For instance, Dominic Van Grusen is someone we work with at Nexo, who knows all kinds of things about cannabis that we don't know. So uh, having those other insights, very, very valuable to us. Not to mention we get to work in greenhouses that we can't work in in Texas because Texas is Texas. So the thing that unifies our research program overall is the commitment to scientific integrity. We say we are led by science. That's more than just a tagline. Everything that we do is scientifically established experimental design. You hear about linear regression analysis, or randomized complete block design, and uh, Latin square design, all these things. Things that people generally don't talk about in the world of cannabis science. So um, there's that piece, and then alongside that, this is not just an academic research program. This is something that has to be commercially relevant so that a grower can come in, understand what we're doing, and then understand how it fits in their grow. So it costs a lot of money, but everything we do is commercial scale. You can come in and know exactly what's going on. Okay, so maximizing grower success. What does this mean in cannabis? Well, uh, there's a lot of how do I? How do I maximize yield? How do I accelerate cycle time, maximize potency, manip manipulate chemical profile, which by the way, I'll be talking about this afternoon in the Amtrium room, so come on out. Uh, today, I'm just gonna keep it simple on this stage. Two questions. What's the right light intensity? What's the right spectrum? Uh, if you're talking just about yield, there is a simple answer. So basically what you're seeing in this figure on the right, three different spectra we tested. I know it's small, but it says R4, R6, R8, that basically refers to how much red there is. So R4 is 40%, R6 is 60%. Sebastian, how much is in R8? How much red? 80%. 80. That's right. That's a great guess. That makes a lot of sense. Um, basically, what I'm showing here is that as you go from 1100 to 1500 micromoles, guess what? Return on yield is about 1 to 1. So 1% 1 more light means 1% more yield. That's really unusual. Like most crops photosynthetically saturate well below that. We thought 1500 was going to kill them. So uh, we said, all right, we obviously need to push these plants a little bit higher, harder. Let's work with R4, the 40% red one, because there were some problems with the other spectra. I'll touch on that in a hot second. Uh, basically, though, when we push these plants all the way up to 2,500 micromoles, what we saw was actually we get that linear return on yield all the way up to about 1,800, 1,850 micromoles thereabouts. Things seem to saturate around 2,000 micromoles and then begin to fall off after that. Now, truthfully, the room we were doing this study in was not equipped to push the plants this hard. So we may have even been able to push the plants even harder 
to 2,000 micromoles if we had the HVAC capacity. No grower is ever going to do that. So now what we tell people is generally you want to be playing with light intensity between about 1,500 to 1,800 micromoles uh, given reasonable facility specifications. So going on from that, we again want to say at those intensities, what spectra can you get away with? So R4, R6, R8, R9B, different red contents. This is what it looks like in practice. So again, the most white light all the way down to the most red light. And this is uh, just an example of how we lay this out. I'm not going to linger on this. I just want to show you so that if you want to ask me about how we did these studies, you can come and we can talk about this. Um, and I want to share a metric that we often talk about, which is THC yield efficacy, right? It isn't just about bud yield. We want to know how much bud did we yield? What was the THC concentration? And when we integrate those things, what was the yield efficacy, right? So even though in some cases we see we get a better yield with more white light, we see that because something with more red has a better electrical efficacy and there's therefore cheaper for a grower to run, we say actually, in a lot of cases, you can get a better THC yield per energy you put in using more red light. And we think, okay, well, that must mean that you use a red light in cannabis. Except for one thing, it does this to your plants. Now, this is a thing, uh, it's kind of a hot topic in the industry right now. You, you hear this being called photo bleaching, sometimes it's called white tips. Um, I'm not going to get too into it right now because it's a long story, but basically this has basically zero market value. This is why you can't use red light in cameras. So generally, if I go back to my main point, come on, clicker, we can do this. There we go. If I go back to my main point, how do we simply maximize grower success? Well, the optimal lighting intensity, about 1,500 to 1,850 micromoles. And uh, in the case of fluence, the R4 white spectrum is what we recommend. You might say, well, that sounds too easy. Uh, and you're right. We could overcomplicate this. Uh, frankly, over the last three or four years, we've asked uh, about a hundred, no, not a hundred, maybe 20 different questions. This is supposed to animate in, but I'll just click it in. Uh, a lot of the questions we have, you know, how do you use UVB? How do you use far red? What about finishing spectrum? What about photo period extension? Is there a curing spectrum? Is it the same in a greenhouse or indoor, Dominic? You tell me. Is there something to do with sunrise or sunset? And then, of course, the hot topics these days. What's going on with photo bleaching? How do I work around that? And uh, just like Sabrina just said, how do I utilize light distribution? So I invite you to come and talk to me or Sebastian. Um, we would love to talk about all of this. You can find us over at our booth way over there. It's the one that says Fluence. Uh, and feel free to take a picture of this slide if you'd like to reach either of us in the future. And that's it. Thank you.